In this day and age, everybody RGBs everything, your room, your laptop, cat, dog, and I'm also gonna show you how you can RGB your Morimoto Super 7 lights for your Jeep JK or JL. Morimoto took over the market with the brand new Super 7 light, but I'm gonna show you how you can easily retrofit these lights. Let's get it. Before I continue on the build, I wanna let you guys know what this is, because it's very important. This is a driver. This is a driver from Profile Performance, and it comes separately in each packet with your Halo and your Demon Eye. So you will have two. This is what you're gonna to use to supplement power over to them. But what's unique with this is you can use this orange wire and wire this up so that way you can get the turn signal out of your Super 7 because this halo light is also a switchback. And of course, with the basics of wiring, it does come with a ground as well too. You need to find a ground for both drivers and you need to find a good spot to tuck these in your engine bay or somewhere behind the headlights so you can hide them from plain sight. And the last driver that I'm gonna speak on is the one that comes with your demon eye. This is very important because this blue wire, once you plug this into your headlight wire, it's gonna turn off the demon eye to make sure that you're not overheating the whole housing and just causing a complete mess or failure in the future. So again, just like I said with the other driver, make sure to mount this somewhere. You don't have to mount it somewhere clean, but I recommend to have a good aesthetic to just put this somewhere real neat and nice. So as you can see, these are already done, but I'm gonna reverse engineer this and show you guys how we even got here. So first, let's move on to this and move this out the way. I'm gonna show you guys the tools that we use and that's what I recommend since this is a custom application, but I understand that sometimes people just have stuff laying around the house. Next, you're gonna need a drill and a whole bunch of other stuff like picks, pliers, you're gonna need dikes, I have two, Allen keys, and a screwdriver. You need a whole bunch of stuff, and it's okay. It's gonna look sick in the end, so let's show you how we got here. So first, I'm gonna take the back end of the Super 7 off. Now, this isn't the most exciting part of the video, so I'm gonna speed through it with a little bit of editing magic. So now I'm taking off the last bolt. Uh, I would recommend just holding the back of this so that way it doesn't fall off and then you have to get a brand new unit. Let's be safe. Boom, baby, now we got everything exposed. So we went ahead and got everything broken down. The one thing I love about the Morimoto Super 7 is it's very easy to get it down to its bare bones self, meaning the projector, the seal, the housing, everything. It's very, very simple. Everything that we're using on this table, you can go to theretrofitsource.com and pick out your kit, whatever you're gonna use, whether it's demon eyes, halos, anything. It's all on the site and we make it very easy to search for whatever you need. This is the demon eye that we use. I'm also gonna let you guys know we did have to modify the bracket just a little bit to make it all work. So disclaimer, I wanna make sure that you guys know that you need to make sure that this is pointing downwards. You want it to shoot into the projector where it's not gonna just make the light spread in the incorrect direction. So before we get installing, I want you guys to be knowledgeable before you just dive in and then you put this all together and you're like, what the hell happened to my lights? So like I said, you're probably gonna have to drill this out just a little bit to make it fit. And you're also probably gonna have to bend it just a tad to make it actually sit flush and work. This is the custom life with retrofitting. Sometimes you're just gonna have to make it work, but that's what makes it a little bit more fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in and we should be good to go from there. We're gonna go ahead and get the halo on now. I'm gonna worry about the wire management last, but next let's just, let's just get it popping. So next, I'm grabbing my Profile Performance Halo Light, again, available on the retrofitsource.com. And I love these because with the Morimoto app, you can actually change the colors of the ring or just have them constantly changing colors so you can flex real hard at the car meets. Another awesome feature about these halos is that they're also switchbacks. So normally these don't come with turn signals, but you can turn this into a turn signal. Just so you guys know, if you are retrofitting this exact light, this is an 80 millimeter ring. Let's go ahead and get it installed. We're gonna move this out the way and we'll come back to it. Right now, we're gonna get into the bezel. All right, and this is where the fun of retrofitting happens. I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna put the halo on top of the bezel. Now, what you need to do is place the halo and we're gonna mark three spots. That way we can go ahead and drill into this. That way we can have the halo secured onto the bezel itself. Also keeping note that it does have a wiring harness. That means more than likely you are going to have to notch out the bezel just a little bit to get this harness through. Go ahead and drill your holes. Next, we're gonna go ahead and secure the halo using our halo wire. This is gonna be used to go ahead and push through the holes that you created on the bezel and then the ones that are existing on the ring itself so you can make sure it's secured 
So that way when you're driving, it's not vibrating around or just spinning around. You want it to be as snug as possible to the bezel itself. Since everything's already notched out, I'm gonna go ahead and, and feed my wire through and I'm gonna go ahead and place my ring right where I need it. Now on a side note, doesn't this remind you of like TikTok, like those ring lights? You know what I mean? Like imagine using these halos as like a ring light. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's bring that in. Let's retrofit some ring lights, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> All right, back on track. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little piece of the wire off. Now there's not really a wrong or a right way to do this. I just wanna make sure that you guys know you need to at least take out enough where you're giving yourself enough slack, let's say you're not making it too short and it's just a pain in the butt to install from there. So I wanna go ahead and take my dikes and cut this piece of the wire off. I'm gonna cut off three pieces. I already cut off one previously. So I'm gonna get my last piece right now. And I, I, we don't have a telescopic camera, you know what I mean? So I know it's gonna be a little bit hard to see this, but you need to feed the wire through. My camera guy's gonna quit after trying to having to, like having to have to film this. You got that? Dang, you, you ran and zoomed in all the way, you got that? Dang. With these little holes that are already pre-existing on the halo ring itself, you need to feed the wire through that. Make sure you put an even amount on each side and then you're gonna feed both of them through the holes that you just made on the bezel. Again, there's no right or wrong way of feeding this wire through. I do recommend just going ahead and putting the wire through all of them, then threading it through the holes that you created in the bezel. I'm just trying to save your life. My mom told me I could be anything I wanna be in life, so I became a retrofitting expert. So now we're gonna give it a little tug. Uh, I just wanna make sure that everything is snug and fits properly. I'm gonna flip this over. Now you're gonna see all your wires forced through. Now, if you know how to tie your shoes, this is a perfect moment for you to flex on everybody. All you're gonna have to do is tie these into knots to make sure that they fit snug. It's very very simple. Unless you have big old hands like me on some small wire and me, man. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess wire that you don't need and just repeat that with the two other pairs and you can move on. So like I said before earlier in the video, you wanna make sure that this ring light is actually snug so it's not vibrating while driving. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and wire tuck these around the projector to make sure that the wires don't get anywhere in the way of any moving parts. This is by LED, so the projector flap is way on the inside, so the likelihood of you actually hitting anything is very low. What we did was we went ahead and just tucked this in all the way through, and there's a grommet here on the other side that you would have to pop out. Don't worry about getting the wire all the way through the grommet right now. We can actually save that for last. You just wanna make sure that this gets tucked and then the excess is pushed through. So let's go ahead and do that. What's up, dude? No, I mean, I appreciate you, man. Like, at least you weren't like a jerk and just hopping in here while filming. Oh, wait. So now I fished that through, but there's still one more step before we can fish the ring light through. Go ahead and take your lens and put it back onto the bezel. Make sure the Morimoto logo is down. You don't want to have it up top and have it upside down. It would just look weird. Let's keep the aesthetics 100%. So go ahead and tighten these bolts with a Phillips head screwdriver. Oh, I got this itch on my nose. Sorry, ever since you came in here now, it's just like... <laughs> now all the bolts are torqued down. Make sure to get a microfiber and clean the inside of your lens. The last thing you would want is setting this all up and just finding a fingerprint on the inside. So let's do the right thing and clean this up. Next up, we're gonna fish this wire through so we can finish up the install. Lights are cool, especially when they're blue and pink behind you. Before I go ahead and tuck this all the way in, also wanna make sure that you guys know that the bottom is where you put in the demon eye. I'm gonna align the Morimoto logo to that to make sure that everything's in the correct orientation. I laugh because you'd be shocked how many people will actually bolt this all back up upside down. All right, so now this is the part where it might be a little bit frustrating, but it's okay, wiring, it'd be like that. To get this wire through the grommet and to make it a lot easier on yourself, all you need to do is deep in this plug. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and push down on all of these. I like to apply a pressure so I can make sure that the wire is actually coming out and then you can pull away and it's exposing all the pins. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pins we just exposed and push it all the way through the grommet. So that way you can pull on this wire and make sure that everything is weather tight. You wanna make sure that no condensation or water is getting into the unit itself. You can make this a little bit easier on yourself by having a friend take a pick put it through and then you start stretching it so that way you can get the wire through. I unfortunately am by myself in this moment so I'm gonna have to work with what I got and we're gonna make this happen. Let's get it. I need a friend. Dude, you happen to be a friend. Get over here. That is perfect timing. I 
have a friend and he is gonna help me with stretching this open so we can get the wire fed through. This is Mike Jones, not the rapper, the mechanic. <laughs> Go ahead and deep in the other wire and feed it through as well. And just like that, we're done. Thanks, Jonesy. You're <laughs> now, as you can see, all the wire is through the grommet, so we can slide this back on over and just close it on up. Disclaimer, this John is a little bit thicker now, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get the grommet in, but you just have to, you know, throw your purse at it and make it happen. Last, we're gonna take the plugs that we depinned and we're gonna put the pins right back in it. Make sure that you put it in the correct orientation because you don't wanna get these wires backwards. Now, if you can't remember what plug you depinned and which goes where, on this specific one, your halo light's gonna have a black, red, blue, and green wire. And where you see this little notch up top, that's gonna be the top. Go ahead and slide the pins back in and we're gonna secure it. So once you get the pins back into the plug, they should secure themselves by the prongs going up. So you're good to go and move on to your last wire, do the same thing. And boom, just like that, we're finished. Not only do you have an awesome Morimoto Super 7 light, but now you have it customized exactly to your taste with a retrofit. And this is what it looks like powered on, but you also have it personalized exactly to your taste. Me personally, I like grabbing any kind of modification and making it my own, and this is the way to do it. Everything that we've installed on this Super 7 is available on the RetroFitSource.com. This is a profile performance ring light and a profile performance demon light. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. What do you guys wanna see us retrofit? Do you wanna see a G35 set of headlights or do you wanna see maybe F-150 taillights? Honestly, it's kind of up in the air and I want to see what your feedback is. But nonetheless, if you want to replicate exactly what we did, we have tools, the rubber you need to seal the headlights, and even much more that you can add as an addition to your retrofit. Go to the retrofitsource.com to grab whatever you need for your retrofit. Yeah.